Hi, welcome to chapter 15 of the UVM Primer code videos. Uh, my name is Ray Salami and I'm the author of the UVM Primer. You can see we're at chapter 15 and our previous video was chapter 13. Chapter 14 had no code examples and so we're skipping over it and moving right to 15. In this chapter we talked about the way to think about object-oriented programming and the difference between thinking in terms of scripting and procedural programming and object-oriented programming. With procedural programming, you think about what steps do I have to do to get the job done, whereas object-oriented programming, you think about what objects do I have to create and connect together to get the job done. And we had an example of a dice roller where we were going to roll a two, two D6s several times and record stats about them. Here we see, we think we're doing real well, because here we see we've started with a classic UVM test uh, we call run test, and we in this case we pass it the name dice test because there's only one object that we're going to be using, and that's the dice test. And if we look at our first dice test, um, we see it's a classic UVM test. It's got it extends UVM test. It it uses the macro. It has a build phase, and it has a run phase. And the build phase creates four objects a coverage object, a histogram object, an average object, and a dice roller object. And if we look at one of these objects, let's look at average, for example, we see the average object is also a UVM component, and it's got a, report, it's got a write function, which is something new, uh, and a report phase. And what happens is we call write as many times as we call it, and each time we call it, it adds the total, uh, that t is the amount that it got uh, the dice total, the dice roll, and we add that to the total, and we increase the count. And then when we get to this phase, and the report phase is one of those UVM component phases that we talked about, when we get to this phase, uh, we, sim we uh, after running everything, we print out to the screen the dice total divided by the count, and that's the average. So we think this is a pretty nifty component. Uh, we do similar things with the histogram component uh, and with the coverage component, whereas in all of them we have a write method and we use that write method to do what we need to do uh, and, we, um, and we then write out the results of the screen. So for example, if we look at the coverage uh, method, we have a cover group that has one bin for each of the possible dice values and uh, every time we get call, a call to write, we uh, copy it out and then we call a sample on the cover group and then in the report phase we print out our coverage. So that's a sort of classic way of using that. Uh, and the histogram works similarly where it creates an array of values and prints them out. So the way we also have a dice roller and our dice roller is an object that has uh, two dice, two die, two dice. It, uh, it randomizes them and we talk about randomization in um, FPGA simulation a lot more, but here's an example of built-in randomization in System Verilog. We randomize our two dice, add them up, and we return them so that this object only has a, a method called two dice, and we use that method here. So we we uh, get the di we we go 20 times. We call the two dice method in the dice roller, and then we pass that roll to our objects, and they calculate some stats. And uh, what we find out is when we pass this in to our uh, fictional professor, uh, he gives us something like a B for this effort because this is not really object-oriented programming. This is simply using objects as if they were function calls. So the, the, these are ascend. We could have written these as function calls, two dice, uh, and uh, we could have simply written a function call for each of these, and it would have worked just like this. And so this isn't really object-oriented programming. This is using objects in a procedural way. What we really want to do is something like this. We want to have a dice roller object, and we want to connect that dice roller object to the coverage, histogram, and average object. And when we connect it up this way, these guys will uh, get the data from the dice roller. And we talked about another design pattern called the, uh, it's called the subscriber pattern. It's called, um, the observer pattern, but we call it the subscriber pattern when we talk about UVM, where the dice roller is essentially publishing the, the number uh, that it rolled, 
and these guys are all subscribing to it. And just like Twitter, um, if you publish something to Twitter and nobody's following you, you don't get an error. It simply doesn't go to anyone. But as more and more people follow you, it goes to more and more people. That's what, how this works here, where we have the subscriber and the, and, the, and the publisher. We have what's called an analysis port that's publishing the data. And we have these uh, subscribers who have an, uh, an object in them called an analysis export that are receiving the data. And we'll see how we connect this up to give ourselves a better solution. So let's go and look at the solution that, that get a better grade. And this is the dice test using subscriptions. Again, our dice test is a uh, UVM test, so it's a component. So it has phases. It's got a build phase. And the build phase creates our four objects. But now it also has a connect phase. And uh, let's look inside one of these objects to see what this connect phase is about. Because we've got this. Uh, let's go, for example, into the average object. So if we go into the average object, we see now that our average extends UVM subscriber. And that means that this is a, a UVM subscriber extends UVM component. So this is a component that's also a subscriber. It's also a, a parameterized class. It means that we're going to get an integer. You can subscribe to any type, but you have to specify the type here in your, uh, in your extension. And then we have our usual uh, macro call. And this is our constructor, typical UVM component constructor. And then we have this this method here called write, which is like the one we had before, but this one's a little more important because when you uh, extend UVM subscriber, there's an assumption that you're going to create a, uh, a function called write. And that function will have uh, one variable, uh, one argument of, called t. It's always called t. And it'll have uh, the type that matches the type in your parameterization. So in this case, what's going on is that uh, this write method gets called like before and we do our accumulation like before and the report phase works the same ways as, as before but now we've got this uh, this fact that we're got a UVM subscriber uh, meanwhile if we go and take a look at our our dice roller our new one the dice roller is different now it's uh, it's also a UVM component like before but it contains this object here called uh, a UVM analysis port. And the analysis port implements the subscriber uh, or this observer kind of design pattern. And so what we do is we, we create this analysis port. In our build phase, we create a new analysis port. And in our run phase, we do the same randomization, but we take the number of the role and we write it to the write method in the analysis port. And what that does is when we call write here in, uh, in this analysis port, uh, anyone who's subscribed to this analysis port, they get their write method called. So if average subscribes to the analysis port, this gets called over here. If we look at the, at the top level of this, we see that we've actually connected several objects to this analysis port. So we have the dice roller. Inside the dice roller is the roll AP, which is the analysis port. And the roll AP object has a connect method. We pass that method something called analysis export. And any object that extends a UVM subscriber gets for free this object instantiated in it called analysis export. And so we say, for example, connect coverage under H analysis to analysis export the histogram analysis export and the average analysis ex export and in doing that we've created this picture so now these three guys are connected and when we run this test uh, we get the same sort of results except you'll notice we don't actually have to run anything here there's no run phase we just hook them up and the uh, dice roller starts its run phase it starts spitting out dice numbers uh, the um, the uh, various analysis tools gather those numbers and when the dice roller drops its objection to ending the test everyone's report phase gets called and we write the report out to the screen and that's how we solve this problem with objects talking to objects uh, versus following a procedural approach